These are your visual notes for chapter 17, uh, the process of protein synthesis and specifically today transcription, going from DNA to RNA. So, as of now, we have discussed DNA and we learned the process of DNA replication that we have here. DNA replication by which DNA makes copies of itself and if you recall the enzyme that we use there is DNA polymerase polymerase 3, polymerase 1 and several other enzymes. If you could list them that would be a great way to remember what's happening. So we cover that and that's usually what is done during the S phase of the cell cycle during cell division. What we are going to start today is the process by which the code in DNA is translated finally into making a protein and how that protein it results in a trait that we already talked a little bit about that when we did genetics. So let's start with this. This is a very nice summary of the process. I encourage you to write it down in your notebook and add details to it as we go learning. And this is a little bit of review from your ninth grade biology class. So what we call the central dogma is really how the genetic information flows in a cell. How does it go from DNA forward? And the DNA is going to be transcribed. So the first process is transcription, where the DNA is going to be a new copy of DNA is going to be made in the form of a molecule of messenger RNA. So from DNA we are make, going to build a new molecule called mRNA. And this process is called transcription. And of course this process, I'm going to make a line here, is going to happen in the nucleus. It's also important to realize the location of these things. Once I have made this molecule of messenger RNA in the nucleus, this molecule is going to move out of the nucleus and is going to go, of course, into the cytoplasm, more specifically into a free ribosome, a free ribosome, where the process of translation is going to start and in this process of translation is how we are going to make a protein. So transcription, translation, a good way to remember them and never get them confused. They go in alphabetical order, C before L. This goes in the nucleus, this is going to happen in the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. So that's transcription and translation. Always take an extra second to think about it and they go in alphabetical order. So what we are going to discuss today is the first part, the process of transcription, a little beyond what you learned in ninth grade. Since we're going to be talking about RNA, let's have a quick review of our RNA situation. RNA is the other nucleic acid. Instead of the oxyribose, the sugar in this case is going to be ribose and in your textbook you have a nice picture of it, you can look at that. The nitrogen bases, uh, you're going to have a difference. You're going to have uracil that in RNA is going to replace thymine. If the need comes for pairing up, uracil will still pair up with adenine and they will form two hydrogen bonds and cytosine will run in and they will make still three hydrogen bonds. Probably the main difference besides the presence of ribose, well not main difference, we have ribose, we have uracil, uh, most of the uh, RNA molecules are single stranded. So I, the diagram here shows this is DNA, the double stranded, and here is RNA that is single stranded. That's important. It's single stranded but it has the po po probability possibility of making hydrogen bonds if needed. There are many 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 types of RNAs. From freshman bio you might remember messenger RNA, 
tRNA and rRNA. Uh, rRNA is the ribosomal RNA, transfer DNA, and messenger RNA. Uh, in AP Bio, we are going to learn about a couple more types of RNA. So, let's focus on the process of how we go from DNA, that is transcription, into a molecule of RNA. More specifically in our case today, how do we go and make messenger RNA? So you have the big picture here, you have a big sheet. Please get your big sheet and get it ready. And let me give you a quick tour of the big sheet. So the big sheet represents a cell with only the things that are important for this moment highlighted. So most of the organelles are not there at all. I do have the nucleus, you see the nucleus, you see a molecule of DNA. Remember that each chromosome is one molecule of DNA, so I have only one chromosome there in the nucleus. This is the cytoplasm, and I have a ribosome here, and ribosomes are made actually of two subunits, the small subunit and the large subunit, and they are separate. Later, they are, when the process starts, they are going to join. So you have those two things. Over here, you have tRNAs, tRNAs, here you have amino acids, amino acids that are floating in the cytoplasm, like amino acids that we get from our food. Over here you have a more detailed, oops, sorry, uh, over here you have a more detailed view of tRNA um, with a section here at the bottom We'll talk about this next class, or in class, I'm sorry. The three nucleotides, tRNA is also made out of nucleotides. Those lines represent nucleotides, but we don't really care much about the sequence or what nucleotides are there. The only three nucleotides in RNA, tRNA, that we care about are the three down here at the bottom, and these are called the anticodon. Also, please notice that attached to the tRNA here is a beautiful amino acid. A quick review about messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is, of course, single-stranded, lineal, but again, a set of three nucleotides, a set of three nucleotides, just three, is called a codon, that is messenger RNA. So messenger RNA, three nucleotides are codon. tRNA, those three nucleotides are an anticodon. So that's pretty much all you need for now. And of course, down here at the very bottom, I have once again, as a good review, the sequence of events with transcription and translation. Replication that we already talked and today we're going to do transcription, the first step in the process. So we are going to focus pretty much here in the nucleus. And first let's get all our uh, vocabulary details looked up. So I have a molecule of DNA, the DNA continues in the bottom, I have just a section here. And what I have highlighted here, the letters, are just going to represent one gene that we want to transcribe, okay? So this is just one of the about 1,000 genes on average that each chromosome has. So just one gene and that's what I have here. Um, this, the direction of the strands is important, of course, the direction of the strands, so I have some labels here. This strand here is the three prime, 3' prime is that one, and this strand of DNA here is the 5'. Prime. For our example today, we are going to call this strand here the template strand. And the template strand is the one that is going to be transcribed. The template is the one that is going to be transcribed. And the other strand 
in this case, for today's example, is going to be the coding strand. And this is actually the one that has the real code that you need to send to the ribosomes. The coding is the one that has the real code that you need to send to the chromosomes. But because you need to make a molecule of RNA using the complementary, you have to copy this one, you have to copy this one to get the code of this one. Once we get going, you'll notice that. So, coding strand, this is the one that has the real code of the gene. And the way I remember, the template, template is the one that is going to be transcribed and both start with a T. So this is the one that is going to be copied. That's the one that is going to be copied. Okay. All right, let's get going. What do we need to transcribe, make a messenger RNA out of a molecule of DNA? Let's, let me, let's start at the top. Sorry about the zooming. Since we said the template strand, this one is the one that we are going to be transcribing. This is our template strand. The first thing that is going to happen, you're going to need two things. You're going to need an enzyme, and the enzyme right now is RNA polymerase, RNA. And that's written at the bottom of your nucleus there. RNA polymerase is the only enzyme you need for transcription. And this enzyme is going to open the DNA, just like you see here. It's going to open the DNA and create a transcription bubble. Another bubble. But this one is a transcription bubble. So RNA polymerase does that. You are also going to need something called transcription factors. Let's write them up. Transcription factors. What are transcription factors? Transcription factors are proteins that regulate or signal which genes have to be transcribed. Repeat, transcription factors are proteins that regulate or signal which genes have to be transcribed. So, I think we are ready to go. Have your pencils ready because you're going to need to start working too. The first thing that is going to happen, if you notice here, I have a couple of funny letters at the beginning. TATA. -T -A. The beginning of the gene, the beginning of the gene, the beginning of the gene, this section of the gene, this region of the gene is called the promoter. This region of the gene, the very beginning, is called the promoter. And within this promoter, there is always, always a specific sequence of nucleotides, TATA, -T -A, and we call that the TATA box. Again, within the promoter, this whole region before the gene really starts, there is a region that is called the promoter. Within this promoter is a sequence of nucleotides that spell TATA, T-A-T-A, -A, and this is called the TATA box. All right? So now we are ready. So what's going to happen if I want to transcribe this gene that is right here? What's going to happen is, very first thing that is going to happen, very first thing, number one, transcription factors that I'm going to make like big blobs here, transcription factors are going to attach to the promoter region. Transcription factors are going to attach to the promoter region. Remember that transcription factors are proteins. So first, 
these proteins called transcription factors are gonna attach right there clink, to the promoter region saying hey we need to transcribe this this gene right here this is the beginning of the gene get ready once the transcription factors are ready then comes the enzyme RNA polymerase RNA polymerase and attaches there the enzyme comes and attaches there where you have those transcription factors and the enzyme starts moving and opening opening the DNA opens the DNA forming the transcription bubble and besides opening the DNA and for opening creating the transcription bubble is gonna start putting together RNA nucleotides that are complementary to these ones so please on you have a line right there next right here instead of building the complementary strand right there that is going to be kind of um, tight please build that strand of mRNA right here so let's start together please the first letter here is a T if you look at your big sheet that's a T so complementary to that will be an A I already wrote that for you the next one is an A so RNA polymerase will add an U the next one is a C RNA polymerase will add an G next one is an A so you have a new next one another A polymerase RNA polymerase will add a new another A another U another A another U a C so the complementary is a G another C complementary is a G another A complementary is an U a T that would be an A a G that would be a C and so on please stop the recording now and complete your messenger RNA please stop the recording and complete your messenger RNA now that you have completed your messenger RNA this messenger RNA is called the messenger RNA primary transcript primary transcript we are not done with it yet primary transcript um, with a pencil please take a second now and please divide this with a pencil in sets of threes please please divide this in sets of threes just like I'm doing here for my purposes I'm gonna number them too so you don't get confused and now what I want you to do is you are gonna label some of these and please do label them exactly like I'm doing exactly as I'm doing the first six are exon one this is intron exon 2 and the final two sets from exon 3 okay so please I hope you can see that clearly please do just like I did right there label them exon 1 intron exon 2 another intron and exon 3 that's why I divided them into threes and numbered them so it's easy so exon 1 is made of the first two 
3 and 4 are an intron, 5 is exon 2, 6, 7 and 8 are introns, 9 and 10 is exon 3. I'll tell you just now what's going to happen. So this is your messenger RNA, but first we need to keep track of our numbers too. Remember that the DNA that we use as a template here was 3 prime. So again, the complementary strand, it follows the same rules. You can only attach to the 3 prime. So the complementary strand, if this was 3, this messenger RNA that we just built, the top here is your 5 prime end and the bottom is your 3 prime end. Make sure you label them. So after this messenger RNA, this primary transcript is made, of course the DNA is going to go back and close up. And the transcription factors are going to be leaving this area after all is done. So DNA is closed, transcription factors left, you have your primary transcript there. Now comes a very interesting process that is called messenger RNA processing. There are several things that's going to happen. And the main things that are going to happen is that the exons are going to be expressed. The introns are going to be removed. All right. So there is a set of molecules called the spliceosome that you have down here. The spliceosome that is going to splice your primary transcript. To splice means to cut and paste, basically. So what is it going to do? It's going to the exons that I'm going to highlight here, the exons, the exons are going to stay and this spliceosome is going to go and cut and remove these exons, sorry, these introns. Bye-bye intron. It's going to go to this intron, cut it and remove it. So you are only going to leave the exons. Exxon expressed. That's how you remember. So what do I want you to do right now? Stop the recording and immediately write down the exons in this new section here. I'm gonna do it very quickly too. Alright, I just wrote my exons because these are the only things that remain. The introns are removed. Now that we have this just done, only the exons, all that I have here is just the exons. This is basically the actual code that is going to code for proteins. You always have those pieces that don't code for anything in between a gene. We'll talk some more about why is that in a minute. Now, this messenger RNA needs to leave the nucleus and go to the cytoplasm. The only problem with this is that in the cytoplasm, there are all sorts of enzymes all the time that are always trying to break these molecules. They are cleaning. So there are nucleases that are going to go try to break it, eat it, break it out into nucleotides so you can recycle and reuse these nucleotides. So there are going to be two other modifications for this DNA, uh, RNA, sorry, two other modifications. The first modification was the splicing that occurred here. The first modification is the splicing that occurred here, that was done by the spliceosomes. The second modification, on the top here, where you have the 5' prime end of your RNA, then you are going to add a GTP, 
guanin triphosphate. Guanin is a guanin with three phosphates attached. Pretty much the same as ATP, but guanin. Guanin triphosphate. And this is called a GTP cap. This is called a GTP cap. More specifically, the 5' prime GTP cap. You'll get used to these names. What does it do? Because this is a big molecule with three phosphates there, a very chunky place, basically if any enzyme tries to attach and try to destroy it, it doesn't work. So it kind of prevents the attachment of any enzymes that are trying to break down those nucleotides. It's a nice protective cap. So 5' prime GTP cap. Now, below, after you have your sequence, a series of enzymes, I'm going to add a bunch of adenines. So please fill out the rest of this with adenines, adenines all the way down, adenines. And this long line of adenines that there is our third modification and is called a poly A tail. Of course, here is our three prime at the end. So this is our poly A tail, polyadenine, many adenines. Hmm? What's the point of this? This is so ridiculous. Again, when this goes into the cytoplasm to be translated into amino acids, the poly A tail is like a similar to kind of like the telomeres. So what they do, an enzyme is going to come, of course, and attach here and start breaking them. But the poly A tail gives them a lot of nothing important to break. So the poly A tail is a, basically like a fuse in a bomb. The longer the fuse, the longer it's going to take for the bomb to explode. The longer the poly A tail, the longer this messenger RNA is going to last in the cytoplasm. Repeat, the longer the poly A tail, the longer this is going to last in the cytoplasm. Why do we want to do that? Well, if you want to make a lot of proteins, a lot of proteins out of this, you want to have a poly A tail that is long because then you can do translation and reuse it and reuse it and reuse it and reuse it many times before the poly A tail gets destroyed. If you just need to make a few molecules of proteins, a few proteins, then you might want to have a short tail. So you just make a few and then you start getting destroyed. So it's a way for the cell to regulate how much of a protein you can make. So this is kind of how they know how much of a protein to make. Do you just need one molecule or you need a thousand molecules? The poly A tail is one of the tools that the cells use. So let's review. After we transcribed our messenger RNA, uh, the exons are going to continue and the introns are going to be removed by this special structure called the spliceosome. And when the introns are removed, those pieces get destroyed and turned into individual nucleotides so that they can be reused. The section that got a spliced together, when all the exons got spliced together, then we go into the second modification that is basically the addition of the GTP cap, guanine triphosphate, on the 5' prime end to kind of plug that end so nothing can attach to it. On the 3' prime end, you add a bunch of 
adenines, and that is your third modification, which is called the poly A tail. So also with the idea of protecting this. Now that you have the phi prime, the poly A tail, and of course that you remove the introns, now this is called a mature messenger RNA, and now finally is ready to leave the nucleus. How is it going to leave the nucleus? Aha! It has to go through a, what's called a nuclear pore. The nucleus has a number of nuclear pores, but surrounding these pores, these holes, are a number of proteins that work as guards, guardians. And for anything, and these proteins in the nuclear pore control what goes in and out. So, for this messenger RNA to leave the nucleus, it has to have the GTP cap and it has to have the poly A tail. So, in addition to serve these two uh, additions, the GTP cap and the poly A tail, in addition to serve as protections against degradation by enzymes, these are also two signals that tell the proteins in the nuclear pore, hey, I'm done, I'm complete, I can move out of here. So with this, this beautiful messenger RNA is going to come through the nuclear pore, is going to move into the cytoplasm, and it's going to bind to a small subunit. These two components are always separate. So please, let's write that down. The first thing that is going to happen, the mRNA, the mature mRNA, is going to bind to a small subunit of the ribosome. Of course, a free small subunit. You know that all ribosomes start as free. And then we'll continue to talk about translation when we get back to class. But please take a minute. I already took the freedom to write here. And if you compare, this is exactly the same sequence that you have over here. What you have here in attached to the small subunit is the same as that one. I just took the freedom to move it on. So with that, you are, we are ready to start the process of translation in class. I just want to take uh, one more minute here to note, highlight a couple of things that we have in the back. In the back you have a box there. These are all from your textbook again that are in color that show you uh, the same thing that I indicated with my model. This is a promoter. Here you have the two strands of DNA. Here is the template strand. And as you know, T template, this is the strand that is going to be transcribed. Transcribed. And you have your data box. And please notice this section here, this section here is the gene. This is actually the gene that needs to become a protein. But before the gene, we have this section before that we call the promoter, and that includes the Tata box. Okay, a new model. The next box shows you something this similar. You have your chromosomes there. I mean, it's chromosomes, your DNA, your two, the, the doubles, yeah, the DNA. And notice, you have transcription factors, these balls here, these represent those proteins that attach to the promoter. Those represent the pro those proteins that attach to the promoter. And then, once you have your, your transcription factors there attached to the promoter saying, hey, right here, 
this is where the gene starts, then comes RNA polymerase. RNA polymerase, that is a blob, this big thing. That is the enzyme that then goes and attaches there and is gonna move in this direction, opening the DNA, separating the two strands, and making that molecule of RNA. Okay. Finally, the process of splicing. I'll show you this in class with more pictures and we're gonna go in more detail about it so you understand the purpose of it. But I really want to leave you now with this beautiful picture of the spliceosomes to understand how they do it. So if you have your DNA right here, you can see that this section here is an exon, right there is an exon, but this whole section in the middle here is an intron that needs to be removed. So you have these components of the spliceosome that attach in each side, grab the ends there, the ends of the introns, and then these spliceosomes just come together, making this little loop there, a loop-de-loop, -loop, and they snap off that loop. They just, once they make the loop, they snap it off, and that's your exon that got removed and the, I mean your intron, sorry, that got removed and your exons that were here end up together. The intron got removed and is right there. So this, the spliceosome is a nifty structure that does that. And finally, and this is really the final picture there. You have your mature messenger RNA with the 5 prime GTP cap. You can see the phosphates there, the actual piece of code there, and the poly A tail in the 3 prime end that can be anywhere between 50 and 250 adenines depending on the uh, length of how long do you need that molecule of messenger RNA to be around? I hope this helps. Thank you for listening. So in class, we are gonna continue with the beautiful process of translation and we'll review before that anything that you missed today. So if you have any questions, make sure you write them so we can get make the most out of class. Again, I hope this helps. Thank you for listening.